I first met Samuel Beckett in 1961 in Paris, where my play, The Caretaker, was being produced. He came into the hotel walking very quickly indeed. He had a very sharp stride and quick handshake. It's extremely friendly. I'd known his work for many years, of course. But it hadn't led me to believe that he'd be such a very fast driver. He drove his uh, little Citroen from bar to bar throughout the whole evening. Very uh, quickly indeed. We were together for hours, and we finally ended up in a place in Les Halles, where eating onion soup at about four o'clock in the morning. And I was by this time overcome with, through I think, um, alcohol and tobacco and excitement, um, <clears throat> with indigestion and heartburn. So I lay down on the table. I can still see the place. When I looked up, he was gone. As I say, it was about four o'clock in the morning. I had no idea where he had gone, and he remained away, and I thought perhaps this has all been a, a dream. I think I went to sleep on the table, and about 45 minutes later, the table jolted, and I looked up, and there he was, and he had a package in his hand, a bag. And he said, uh, I've been over the whole of damn Paris to find this, and I finally found it. And he opened the bag and gave me a tin of bicarbonate of soda, which indeed worked wonders. Some time ago, I, a friend of mine showed me a letter I'd written to him in 1954, when I was 24, in fact. I'd forgotten about it. It was about Beckett, and I'd like to read a paragraph from that letter. The farther he goes, the more good it does me. I don't want philosophies, tracts, dogmas, creeds, way outs, truths, answers, nothing from the bargain basement. He is the most courageous, remorseless writer going. And the more he grinds my nose in the shit, the more I'm grateful to him. He's not fucking me about, he's not leading me up any garden, he's not slipping me any wink, he's not flogging me a remedy, or a path, or a revelation, or a basin full of breadcrumbs. He's not selling me anything I don't want to buy. He doesn't give a bollock whether I buy or not. He hasn't got his hand over his heart. Well, I'll buy his goods hook, line and sinker because he leaves no stone unturned and no maggot lonely. He brings forth a body of beauty. His work is beautiful. Well, I wrote that um, about 36 years ago and I feel exactly the same now.